What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're enjoying this content, please go ahead and do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. All right, in today's video, this is going to be a two-part video series because I definitely want to break up the information that I'm about to share. We are going to tackle how to use the sound set builder within Personas Studio One. Now, for the most part, this should cover, if even if you're still on version three, it should be the same. I don't think there's any major changes between version three and version four in terms of workflow. All right, first of all, what is a sound set builder? Well, when you load Studio One, you have this files tab. You have all these little icons over here. Essentially, these are folders that are copy protected by personas. So we have things like our impulse responses. Um, we have our, uh, depending on the sound set that you have installed, for example, it may have different things. So this one has a bunch of presets for uh, different bass guitars. This is part of the core library. If we go to something like Impact XT Kits and Sounds, we have some music loops in there. We have all of our impact presets. We have loops that are in the form of audio loops. We also have samples that are in the form of one shots that have no tempo information. So if you think of a sound set as just like a folder that's sitting on your hard drive, but it's copy protected or encapsulated, that's the way to think about sound sets. And we also have an image we can click. We get a large image preview. We have uh, the basic name, uh, the information, copyright, and we also have the option to view a website of the actual developer or the person who made the sound set. Okay. so. All that being said and done, let's go to our files tab. Essentially, I've navigated to this folder over here, which is where I'm going to build this sound set, right clicked, and I've chosen new tab from here. So I'm able to go to a tab so that we can see everything that we need. Now, if I expand this, you'll notice that I have a folder structure that's already built. And I also, in an effort to save time, I have some files that have already been placed directly in here, but I've built some folder structure that's relevant for what we need to do. So the first thing you need to do if you want to use a sound set builder is you're going to go to your home tab. We're going to go to cloud. We're going to go to Personas Exchange. We're going to sign in. And in extensions, you want to look for sound set builder. Now I'm on version four. So you would go ahead, find this, click the install link, and then essentially you'll be asked to restart Studio One and it will be available in your extensions. So if I go to my extensions here, you'll see we have the sound set builder directly within here. All right, now I've already got this installed, so I'm not gonna worry about anything there. Okay, so the first thing to note is that whenever you're working with a folder, like I said, you can do some work ahead of time and I would recommend doing some work ahead of time. I've built this folder, I've titled it what I want it to be, I have a folder in here for my loops. I've got a folder in here for eventually that will hold music loops, folder that holds one shots. I'm going to use the one shots to actually build an impact XT kit. And then I'm going to save a preset. Notice here that I have a presets folder and then I have a subfolder. We're going to get back to this uh, in a little bit, but there's a reason for that. And then I also have a folder here for SoundX files. The only time you may need this is if you're do working with Presence XT instruments and you want to copy protect or encapsulate your Presence XT patch in a SoundX file. So all that being said and done, really quickly, let's take a look at why I have these two subfolders in the presets. If I grab any one of these instruments, like this one here, for example, notice how we have these folders over here. Now within these folders, we have subfolders and then we have the presets located here. Essentially, I don't want my presets that I create to be at the very, very bottom. I want them to be organized. And you can see here, like I have Marcus Huskins Music. I have a bunch of presets that are in a subfolder so that I have some organization when it comes time to being able to view my content. That's the reason I've done that. All right, so the first step is we have our folder. We've already put some content in it. One thing that we can do, the minute you install the sound set builder, you will have the option to right click and mount folder as sound set and pack sound set from folder. This is the very final step before you pack, but what we are going to be working with is the mount folder as sound set option. But before we do that, I just wanna take a look at one thing. I have these two files over here, which are essentially drum loops that I've borrowed from another library. They have tempo information. Studio One always uses audio loops for any audio loops. So it uses a lossless compression and it also has a chord track metadata information available and it also has tempo uh, metadata information available. Really quick and easy way to be able to convert these is by right clicking, we can convert to an audio loop. So now we have an audio loop version of these files and you'll see they have 95 BPM, 
95 BPM. The date has changed over here. Now I don't need these two anymore. I can just right click. I'm going to just delete these. So I'm just going to right click and delete these files. It says, do you want to delete these permanently from disk? And I can say yes. So those are going to be gone now. Now, one thing I would say is anytime you're working with loops and you're dragging stuff over, definitely you want to make sure that you are using, uh, you're using an option or an alt drag. So you're working off of copies of the original. So I've done that. That's my first step. That's something that I can do ahead of time. Now, the very first step in working with a sound set is right clicking and mounting the folder as sound set. Here you have an option to give it a title. The title is essentially the same name as the folder, the main folder that we're using. Presets, this is important. I named my main presets folder, which is like the top level folder where all of my presets are going. I called that presets. Nice and easy, easy to remember. We'll come back to this in a moment. The next thing you want to do is, you don't have to do this, but it's nice. I'm going to choose an icon that I've loaded. This is a huge file. I believe the minimum recommended size is 512 by 512, um, a square aspect ratio. So I'm going to load that. So this is now going to be part of my sound set. I'm going to call this... Um, I'll just put my name and you would put your brand or your name description. Um, you could say an example sound set. We'll just, we'll just call it that. Then you have the option to enter any copyright information, um, option or alt G on a Mac to get the copyright symbol and then your website. So in this case, you know, I could put www dot my extremely difficult to spell name dash music.com. And now I will click OK. Edit identifier. You don't need to change this. If you're just creating sound sets for yourself or you want to share them with people, you don't need to change this. If you do try to change it, you'll get this message saying it's really important. Make sure you want to change it. So I'm just going to click no for now. So you can leave this identifier as is, and that'll keep yourself out of trouble. Don't worry about it. Let Studio One handle that behind the scenes. If you ever want to create content directly for the Personas shop, directly for Personas as a developer, that's something you would get in touch with Personas for, and they would supply you with your own unique identifier. So I'm going to click OK. And now essentially what's happened is we have mounted this folder as if though it is a sound set. So now if I come into my files tab and I go to sound sets, let's go up a little bit. Here we are, example sound set. So now even though I don't have this installed on my system as a sound set, just the fact that I have mounted this folder as a sound set makes Studio One see it as a sound set. So now the basic premise is this. If you are creating any presets in terms of virtual instruments like Impact XT, for example, you definitely want to make sure that before you create the presets, before you've even started with the presets, that you first create your folder structure, pull over all the material that you are going to need, mount the folder as a sound set, and then I could go ahead and start creating a preset. So we're going to go through this really quickly, and then I think we're going to leave this as a part one. So I'm going to drag in an instance of impact, and this is loaded a blank instance of impact in the default setting. Now I'm going to go back to my files tab in my sound sets, and I'm going to go to my one shots folder, and let's start populating the pads with some of these samples. So I've got my snare, and now I'm going to use, let's go with hi-hat closed. And then we'll go with hi-hat open. Now, I'm not following any drum MIDI map or anything. And I'm not even worried about anything here for now. I just want to build an instrument that works. Okay. Now, while we're here, let's shift select both of these. And let's set these both to choke group one. So, so this pad over here will cut off this one or either one. So it becomes kind of like monophonic. All right. So now that we have the samples dragged over, the one thing to note is I am dragging these samples into this instrument while this folder is mounted as a sound set. This is the most important thing when creating your presets when you're working with the sound set builder. If you create presets with a folder that's not mounted as a sound set and then you mount it, they won't work. It'll be broken. I can promise you it's not fun and I wasted many, many hours trying to figure this workflow out and this is the way you have to do it. You have to first mount the folder as a sound set and then create your preset. So we have our folder or we have our preset or our instrument created. We have two options. I can either store this preset locally on my own internal system and then I can copy the preset over to my presets folder here 
or I can simply export this directly. In this case, I'm going to export this preset and we need to navigate to the proper area. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go into presets, insert name here. This is all about having subfolders from within the presets. And we'll have a look at how this looks a little bit later, but I'm just gonna call this my impact preset. Okay, really quickly, let us save this. Now I'm going to right click and refresh and you'll notice that my impact preset now shows up. Now watch what happens here. I'm gonna right click and remove track and instrument. Now I'm gonna drag this in. Boom, the preset works. It loads properly. Now watch what happens. I'm gonna right click, remove track and instrument. Watch what happens if I come back to the files tab and we need to go to the custom tab that we created and I'm going to unmount this folder. So now this is just a regular folder. Now watch what happens if I go into the presets and I take this and I try to drag it in. We're getting a missing samples dialog box. Why? Because Studio One is referencing the file path as being in the sound set. But we're using a regular folder and the regular folder, the file path of these sound sets in this regular folder, or, or, or rather of these one shots, is literally Marcus Huskins, you know, Macintosh HD forward slash documents forward slash this, wherever they're sitting on my system. So let's take this, remove track and instrument. Now watch this. We right click, we mount the folder as a sound set again. We'll click OK. Now I can load the preset either from here or I can load it from the sound sets. It's, it's the same thing. It's being seen in Studio One as a sound set in either scenario. But let's go back here. Now if I drag this over, Boom, that loads properly. Now, right before we go really, really quickly, I wanna focus on one more thing. Once you've created your preset, the preset that has now been exported to the actual sound set using one shots from within the folder that's mounted as a sound set, at this point, it might be cool to do something like some music loops. In this case, since we're using Impact XT, I'm gonna create a pattern part, something really, really simple. Um, let's, let's do something like, we'll do like this. So now, let me just loop enable this. And then maybe I wanna do something like this, where I do kind of like a, every other one, like that. Okay, let's do an open one. Okay, perfect. Now I'm actually gonna do one more thing because this is one of the really cool things about using music loops and working with uh, pattern parts is I could, for example, do variation two and I could fill these all in. Okay, so we have two different pattern parts. We've got variation one and we've got variation two. So now all we have to do to create a music loop is I'm gonna right, I'm gonna open this folder. This is mounted as a sound set. I can just drag this directly and drop it here. I'm gonna create a music loop. Now watch what happens here. I'm gonna right click, remove track and instrument. Now if I drag and drop this music loop in place, it loads the preset that we had over here. And in addition to that, it also loads the pattern and we have both variations. So really, really awesome. But if I was to unmount this folder and we tried to do it like this, same music loop, watch what happens. Doesn't work. We have the missing samples dialog. This is why it's so important that you always work with your folder mounted as a sound set. Let's remove track and instrument again. So I think we're gonna stop here because we've covered so much information. And in the next video, the part two, we're gonna go a little bit further, uh, specifically in terms of working with uh, Presence XT instruments and SoundX files in general. And then in addition to that, we'll talk about how to basically wrap up the whole process by packaging a sound set. And maybe we'll even take a quick look at using the metadata tagging so you can tag your presets, music loops and things like that. Anyways, that's all the time I have for this video. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. I will do my absolute best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.